Okay guys, let's look at how to install this dashboard template. It is hosted currently on Gumroad, so to get it, you have to navigate to this URL. I will actually be sharing this in the description below and in the comment section for you to get it. When you get on the page, one important thing I need you to know is that of course you need Bricks Builder and it is heavily dependent on the ACSS framework so you must have that unless you have a way of going around it but i heavily um i actually recommend that you use the acss plugin if you can reconfigure any other framework to to match the variables of acss then you can use that one so you can actually click on this link to preview it live to see how it works and then proceed to download it so it's actually here for free so when you get here, you just have to enter an amount, zero plus, zero, free, right? Um, unless you want to tip, then you enter an amount greater than zero. So you click on I want this, and then uh, when you get to this page, you just click on get. Um, I'm actually, this is a test uh, purchase because I'm actually logged into my account. So you click on get, um, you need to enter zero here again. So we proceed. With the purchase and then when you complete the purchase it should take you to a page similar to this and all you have to do is i'm um, instead of me downloading all of it i'm going to download it individually that is a personal preference so anyhow you want it so i'm going to download it so the first one is the dashboard template which is a json file and the second one is the javascript file needed for um, certain interactions and a few other stuff we'll get to that in a minute so now that I've downloaded my files, I'll go to my playground. And like I said, the only plugin you need is ACSS. I am using Fluent Snippets as my snippet plugin for this demo. Um, in most cases on live production websites, I use WP Code Boss, but Fluent Snippets is just fine and it's 100% free. Um, this one is not needed for this, just have it installed. So ideally, the way you use this template is to create a dashboard page, All right? So I'm going to create a dashboard. Um, did I spell that wrong? Yeah, I guess so. Dashboard page, and I'm going to publish it. Now, when you publish this page, here's what we are going to do. The file I downloaded, uh, this is the, the JSON file. Unfortunately, this approach that I'm about to demo here is not working. I don't know if it's a bug. So I just highlight everything. I just dragged and dropped it into my browser. And then I'm trying to copy everything, go into the builder and then paste. But you can see it says pasted elements, but nothing is really pasted, right? So this is not going to work for us. So what we are going to do is that we are going to create, we are going to go to the template area and then we import template and then drag our template file over there and then import it now our template is imported so we can now view it on the front end and this is what we get so you can see our icons logo and everything is not working the interactions are not working because we have to do a few things so i'm going to click on edit with bricks as we are in here you can see the reason our icons were not showing is because they were not signed because i was also using the code element the code source for the svgs that i use throughout the site so if for some reason you are not seeing this signature icon here for you to sign all the quotes you can always go to bricks go to settings come to custom code um even for this to show it's important that you have code execution enabled right so you have to come here and then you click on regenerate code signatures and it should do the same thing for you but since i have mine showing i'm going to click on this and important you can just go through all of it to, to confirm that you are not importing any other thing other than the svgs onto your website so i'm just going to click on sign all and voila we are done but for some reason it's still showing as no signature so what i'll do is i'll save and then reload the builder and they are now they are now all showing you can see everything is showing fine but 
I cannot, like the interactions are not working. Okay, the interactions are not working. When I click on this, the classes that are supposed to toggle and other, other stuff, they are not working. So we need our JS file. So back into the builder, I'm going to open Fluent Snippets. I'm going to create a new snippet and I'm going to call this dashboard snippet. So I'm going to open my text file, which has my JS in it. I'm going to copy everything in it and I'll paste it right into the snippet input area. And over here, it says run everywhere. If you run it everywhere, it's going to work. But I think we want it on the front end. So I'm going to select the front end only because that is where we are running this snippet. And I'm going to create snippets. Okay, um, so my bad. I think you have to select scripts, right? So this is, we have site-wide footer. Yeah, I think here, yeah, site-wide header. So we need it in the footer area. So we should be fine. Hit that and it's now saved. So now we should, if we should go back, reload, you can see now it's working just fine now. And that is all you need, you have to do to get this, the, this dashboard template working for you. Okay, you can see, so now it's working. Let me disable the admin bar. You can see it's working just fine. And then you can resize it and then everything is working. Now, currently this is a template, right? But for dashboards, they are usually going to be actual pages on your website. So what do you have to do? You, you have to go, um, what I will be doing in my case is I'll open, I'll edit the dashboard page that I created and then I'll come here, copy everything that is here and then paste them onto my dashboard page. Then I'll go to this page, I'll go to settings, page settings, general, and then disable my header and footer because we already have our header here. We don't want any other thing getting in our way so now i can i can decide to de delete the templates because we only needed it to get the content onto our site i can delete it but i'm keeping it there as a let's say backup or something i don't know so now we have an actual page that is our dashboard page you can see we have our dashboard which is this one here now this links the, the links here to edit this uh change the link you just all you have to do is just come to nav link very important that is where the link is and then you, in, you select internal you look for the dashboard page that you created and you are good to go you do the same for all the the pages that follow so i'm going to save this and now we have this as our dashboard link now there are a few things here we are going to create other pages as well so i'm going to create another page and i'm going to call that one calendar so i'm going to call this calendar and this is a page under our dashboard pages so i'm going to set the parents of this page to my dashboard and then save it so you realize that when you open this page it says dashboard first last calendar so calendar is a page under dashboard or dashboard uh, calendar has dashboard as its parent page right so now we can edit this page this is where components come into play but then there is currently a bug to make this work we are going to copy this for instance okay go back to my calendar page and i'm going to paste this over onto the calendar page go here to page settings general and then hide these two pages Okay, but then there is an issue because if if I made a change here, for instance, if I added a link here, right? Let's say I change the link here to my calendar page because of course it's the calendar page, then I open this page. So now this is the calendar page. Uh, because I'm viewing the calendar page, it is the one that is uh, set as the active one. When I click on the dashboard, it takes me to the dashboard, but then on the dashboard page itself, we did not update this link. So you see, when I click on it, there is no link over there. Nothing happens when I click on it. So this is where components come into play. But then, like I mentioned earlier on, there is a bug that I believe has already been fixed, but not yet released. So back here, ideally, what, what you would have done is to have this whole sidebar element as a component. But then the moment we set this as a component, 
this because i'm using code as the source for my icons these codes these icons are not going to render on the front front end they are not going to render on the front end so you will realize the all the icons in this are not going to appear and i reported it on the forum and it turns out there is already a report for that and it has been fixed uh, to the best of my knowledge so for now we are just going to do it the hard way when the the fixed version is released you can then create this as a component so when you edit it at one place it reflects on all the other pages you don't have to go on to all the other pages to make the changes that you make here they, this i think is the only one that needs to be a, a component all the other ones uh like or this page is always going to have unique content so it doesn't necessarily has to be a component unless you have ways of getting it to work as a component so back to the dashboard page i'm going to select the calendar nav link and also set that as my uh, calendar right so now i have these two pages now when i reload my page I select calendar i'm on the calendar page i go to dashboard i'm on dashboard page at least you can see that from here see so i'm on the dashboard page this is my calendar page and so on so the same way you're going to create the pages for all the other um, menu items that you add here and then the the only one that is different here is this uh, logouts for this one there is a dynamic tag i'm going to set this to dynamic data and then um logouts logout url now i think best practices because when a user clicks on this i'm not sure it gives the user a prompt that are you sure you want to log out so another way you can do that is to not add a link directly to this but you can create a very small modal where if the user clicks on logout it it will ask them are you sure you want to log out then when they click on yes the yes will have the actual logout link right so that is how you're going to do that now back to styling of this back to how how are you going to style this now what um for this one what i did was if there is any style that bricks has control for i use the default bricks controls right so let's say we have padding here i'm using the default padding inputs provided by bricks the only things that i wrote custom css for are those ones that i that are uh, like interactions like let's say hover events and all those stuffs like you get me anything that has to do with interactions i wrote css for them you can actually use this area for your hover active and all those stuffs but i don't think it's it's intuitive enough and i think it wastes time it's it's not very productive when you decide to use this this area so i prefer to write css for them and all the css for everything you see here is down here when you go to dashboard you can see the css on it all the css is over here for you okay so um you can see the css and i commented them very well so at least you know for instance this one says when we hover on the nav links and um and also when uh for current page links this is how we want to style them and when we hover uh when then when we hover over the nav link, link icons this one and also when it's a current page this we want to change the fill color of the icons but for some re weird reason this one is not working this css is not working so i think i will come back to it later on and then i don't know if it's a bug because when i look on the front end i don't even see the fill color here on the front end so i'll come back to it again and investigate exactly what is working uh, what is wrong with that one so the same goes for all the styles here but there are some few things here for instance if you wanted to change the width of this sidebar you easily you just have to come here and then update this value here and it should be good to go and a lot of stuffs are interconnected for instance the size of this icon all these icons here are connected to the size of this logo for instance when you look at this logo size it is two times the size of our icons right so if i should come here and update this to two you can see everything adjusts to match that right i'm not sure you want to do two so let's say 1.5 or let's say 1.2 you get it right so i think that is it and everything else everything else here is self-explanatory and 
in most cases you might not want to update these ones but if you think you want to change the ratio at which certain elements respond to how other things are changed then you want to come here and then relook at the calculations and then maybe do the necessary updates to them and like i mentioned earlier on most of the styles that bricks has controls for i use the native inputs provided by bricks so if you wanted to change the background color of this you want to change it from whatever that it is currently to something else then you want to come in here and then update them manually from here you can see and one thing is for all the animations i just added 0.4 s uh, for most of them in their controls when you come here the transition i just put the transition duration is 0.4 s and i think this is one of the cleanups that i had to do but maybe later on i'll do it but for now it's just like this because uh you have to declare a variable for this um somewhere in the custom css here and then put declare the variable here so that when you update it there it updates across the dashboard but i didn't do that uh, when i was building it i was just putting the values there i did a lot of cleanup and then but then these are one of the things that i forgot to clean up my bad all right so i think that is pretty much it yeah so you can have, you can change these uh, icons to whatsoever that you prefer and also because this is heavily dependent on acss you just you, you, you can see you can design it to work in any way you want for instance this is the dark mode when you toggle dark mode and stuff this is what you get and this you can change this to to look any how you want it to look when you and also one thing is i'm using only the primary color palette from acss so it's very important if you are not using the primary color then it's not going to work i'm using the primary color throughout so um if you decide not to use the primary color or for some reason you are not using it at all then you have to go in there and then update the color values for all of these across the design and uh, i think that that is one of the things that i should have declared a variable for but i'll do better next time thank you